Hello everyone and welcome to Hyrule Academy. This is a Zelda lore and theory podcast where we talk all about your favorite subjects from across the Legend of Zelda series. Starting off today's show, you heard Farron Woods from the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. That's right off the main soundtrack, so I hope you all enjoyed that. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject that's pretty amazing, pretty fun, and exciting. And I hope that all of you at home are ready to theorize along with me. Today, we'll be talking all about the Forest Temple. uh, And specifically, we're talking about the Forest Temple from kind of all games. Now, I know that some of you might not know this, but the Forest Temple is in more games than The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It can also be found in Twilight Princess, Spirit Tracks, and Triforce Heroes. However, most notably, in Ocarina of Time, it seems to be haunted in some way because it contains four Poes, Amy, Beth, Joelle, and Meg. There are these twisty corridors, and the boss is a phantom version of Ganon called, well, Phantom Ganon. By defeating those Poes and collecting the four colored flames, you can gain access to the boss chamber within. However, in Twilight Princess, it's quite substantially different, with the main theme being monkeys. There are monkeys all over the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess. It's quite a bit different, but just as interesting, but in a different way. In Spear Tracks, well, the temple's a little bit more generic, with the final boss being a Stagnox, which is just a, uh, a giant bug. There's really not much more to say about him. And Triforce Heroes, it's also a bit generic, with Margoma serving as the boss. For those who don't know Margoma, it's kind of like an eyeball in a spinning Beyblade. Uh, but yeah, I think we have a lot of interesting things to bring up today on the show. So I hope all of you at home in the Twitch chat are ready to help theorize along with me. Today, we have some special guests for you. Uh, and by special guests, I mean special questions. There's no special guest today, in fact. Uh, today's questions, my friends, are, was the Ocarina of Time Forest Temple always haunted? And if not, how did it become haunted? What purpose could the Forest Temple serve before being infiltrated by Ganon? And lastly, is the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time also the same Forest Temple we see in other games? That's for all of you to decide at home, but for now, enjoy some music. We'll be back with more. Hyrule Academy. Welcome back to more Hyrule Academy. This is MC, your host, back again. Hope you're all been doing well. I see there's lots of theorizing going on in the chat, and I'm taking good note of all of your discussions, so keep them coming, and you'll be hearing them later on in the show. The last song you just heard was Forest Wraiths by Emunator, E-M-U-N-A-T-O-R. That song is uh, from uh, OC Remix, in case you want to download it yourself. Couldn't resist a good old-fashioned Forest Temple remix on our Forest Temple episode. In fact, I have another one coming up a little bit later on in the show. It's now time, my friends, for your pop quiz. Everyone in the chat, feel free to answer these questions, and whoever writes it first, well, you get a theoretical point. First question, who is the manager of the Romani Ranch in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask? If you guessed Kremia, you're correct. Congratulations. Question two. Jabu Jabu's Belly is a dungeon in Ocarina of Time and what other game? If you answered Oracle of Ages, you're the winner. And your last question today on the pop quiz. In A Link Between Worlds, how much does it cost to rent the Big Bomb Flower from the Big Bomb Flower seller? And the answer on that one is 200 rupees. Looking over at the chat, it looks tri- looks like Triforce 1981 was the first one to say Kremia, although spelled it Kremia. I will accept it, but I will ask that in the future you check your spelling. 
And Monica was the first one to choose Oracle of Ages, the dungeon in which uh, you find Jabu Jabu's belly. And uh, I might say that Jabu Jabu's belly and Oracle of Ages was one of the hardest dungeons in the entire Legend of Zelda series. And it looks like nobody got correct the big bomb flower cost. Monica gave it a shot with 300 and Okami Haile gave it a shot with my whole wallet. Unfortunate that you did not get the answer, but perhaps you'll get it next time. For now, we're gonna return to our discussions all about the Forest Temple over in the chat and listen to a little bit more music. We'll be back with more Hyrule Academy. Welcome back, everybody, to more Hyrule Academy. That last song you just heard was Memories of the Forest by Wayne Strange. And that is on the Hero of Time album, which contains all sorts of wonderful orchestral arrangements of your favorite Ocarina of Time songs. I couldn't resist putting that one in there because not only did it have a lot of Lost Woods in it, it also contained the Forest Temple. So I couldn't resist. Everyone. It's now time for your favorite part of the show where I read out some of your discussions at home and see what you've been saying in the chat. So to my question about the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time always being haunted, we had some interesting messages. For example, Monica thinks that it was not always haunted and in fact, the Forest Temple could have been a base for people who previously lived in the forest and maybe even traded with Hyrule or maybe their own society. Uh, and that maybe someone eventually took it over. And that's where the pose came from. Because as we know in uh, our usual Zelda lore, wherever there's violence, there ends up being pose. For example, see Akana Valley. And maybe these pose just happened to also create the Lost Woods. Maybe the magic of the Forest Temple leaked out and that's what made the Forest Temple to begin with. Lots of interesting theories there for Monica. Pink Penguin though had a theory uh, or heard a theory even, where that the Forest Temple once was a stronghold for the royal family, which I find to be really interesting because when I think about the Forest Temple and I think about its architecture and its design, it it does seem like it's built, like it's it's an industrial place. It seems like not something that's necessarily a like uh, a, a, a religious location or something along those lines. It does seem more stronghold-like. So I really enjoyed that theory and Pink Penguin, I, I hope that in the future you can uh, uh, give us a little bit more depth here into the into your theory because that's really good or what you heard at the very least. Also, when I asked about the Forest Temple being the same as others, uh, we had some interesting responses. Of course, Tylenos reminded us that the Triforce Heroes uh, Forest Temple is found in Hytopia and the uh, the Forest Temple and Spear Tracks will be found in New Hyrule. So it's very unlikely that these would be found at the Hyrule that we know. However, Sheikah Zelda um, gave me something interesting saying that uh, in Twilight Princess, the Forest Temple is built on top of a giant tree and that maybe just maybe that Forest Temple is built on top of the Deku Tree's corpse from Ocarina of Time, which is interesting because we don't see the uh, Deku tree in Twilight Princess. So it is possible. Uh, and it's actually a, a, a pretty cool theory. It would mean that they are not the same forest temple. And, you know, when you look at the actual structure of the temples, they, they don't seem very similar uh, in terms of actual construction. But as we know, Hyrule is a very magical place where things can change and morph in all sorts of different ways that it's kind of hard to understand. Um, so I still think there's a chance that the Twilight Princess and uh, Ocarina of Time temples are the same. It's just received a lot of uh, magical reconstruction, in, in, my, uh, in my opinion. Uh, also, Monica mentioned some lore that I, I, I was excited to hear about, where uh, the, 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 the monkeys serve as forced guardians. Not, not, and I believe this is something that also exists in real life. Uh, don't quote me on that. But we've seen it also in uh, Majora's Mask with the, uh, the, the Deku kingdom, uh, which I think is really interesting. Uh, bring up the, the, the idea of monkeys being kind of a little bit more symbolic in Twilight Princess. So it's really interesting. Uh, I was really excited to see some of those theories in the chat. 
I have a few more of my own, but I'm actually going to save them for a few more minutes. And next up, we have one more song. This is Generations from OC Remix. Welcome back to Hyrule Academy, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that last song. That was Generations, and that's a four-part collaboration song by Jillian Aversa, Expert Novice, Zircon, and would you believe it? Zeldathon's own Drum Ultima. As always, you can check out that song over on OC Remix if you want to give it a download. Absolutely love it. Uh, been one of those classic mixes as the chat brought up today. So I couldn't help myself but to... To, to play it here during a Forest Temple show. So I actually want to share one theory of my own with you all before we head out tonight. And I, I this theory is kind of a working theory, but I, you know, I was thinking a lot about the four pose that we see in the Forest Temple, uh, Beth, uh, Meg, and the others. Um, and how like it's very specific that when you come in there, they close up the entrance to Phantom Ganon. And when I, when I think about that, obviously they're a villain, but I, I think about it, you know, wh these are Poes that are named. Uh, a lot of times we do see Poes, you know, in the graveyards and stuff that aren't named, uh, or we see Sharp and uh, Flat, the composer brothers who have names. And, and it makes me think a little bit about who these uh, Poes might be. Um, because when I, when, I, when, I, when I put my brain into the theory there, uh, I was thinking about how uh, what Monica said earlier tonight about how the Forest Temple could have been more of a utility place and it could have been, you know, a, a stronghold of sorts. And as we know, the temples in Ocarina of Time are, are basically the home base for the sages and the, the sages go there to uh, restore the balance of the temple to be able to, you know, awaken fully. And it makes me think about how um, it's very possible that Perhaps at some point the forest temple was overrun by monsters, but because the royal family was not supportive enough of the forest temple as a stronghold, it fell, and uh, um, the the four Poe sisters who fell resented the royal family for that, and they uh, uh, changed their allegiance over to Ganon. So they were previously people who were, you know on the side of the royal family all about you know protecting them but the royal family kind of said screw the, screw the forest temple it's not a priority or you know in the case of ocarina of time the king dies and so it's very possible that without the kingdom support and ganon overtaking it um the four po sisters who were previously you know perhaps even mystical beings that you know were, were there to protect the forest temple and the mystical qualities it contains they said screw that and they, they pledged their allegiance to Ganondorf or even they were under control of Ganondorf. You know, if, if you if you want to keep if say they keep their allegiance. Uh, I, I thought a lot about that one just because, you know, th th we have four Poe sisters there at, at, in the Forest Temple. And it makes me wonder what, what's their deal? You know, named Poe's is not a, a, a typical thing you see in the Zelda series. Anyways, folks, that's all I have for you for this week. A reminder to next month, I believe that'll be on November 6th, 2021. Tune in at 7.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, where we'll be discussing the Deku Kingdom. Uh, and that is from Majora's Mask. We're going to have a t talk about perhaps the butler. We can talk a little bit about the uh, the, the butler's son, perhaps. I, we don't want to focus entirely on that. But there's a wide breadth of things we can talk about. The king and the princess and all of that. If you have any thoughts about the show, please tweet them at me with at SuperMCGamer. Thank you to Eric Buckles for the use of the Hyrule Academy theme music you've been hearing in the background. And thank you all in the chat for your input. I really appreciate you all uh, adding on to the show. And as we end off tonight, we're going to be playing one more song, which is Into the Greenwood from Hyrule Warriors. Please enjoy, and thank you for listening to Hyrule Academy. <laughs> 